All right, today is uh, December 6, 2022, and this call is the mentoring call, which got messed up today, but Hella and I are here. So I'll record this portion, and then if others can join, that'd be great. Otherwise, we'll just figure out something else. So, all right, Miss Hella, how can I uh, support you today? It sounds like you did some of your own work with the horses, right? Yes, and... Um... Yeah, this uh, suggestion you gave last time, it really worked well. And I'm thinking that it's some sort of fine tuning. And uh, I'm really eager just to go further with this. So let's talk about what you did experience, because I think this is really important. And I want to let everybody know that what you did was go out and do your own body scanning with your herd, right? Mm -hmm. Again, because I again feel like in a like a spiral. I feel like in a beginning, but in a totally different place. Yeah, and I think what you've just said is really important because it's not a one and done with the body scanning because never. we're it's never done. We're totally evolving. It's like you know, I do artwork, and I was in an art class the other day, and the instructor said, "Look, when you start a piece." And then you come back to it a week later, a day later, a month later, you're a different person. So you're relating to that piece from a different perspective. And it's the exact same thing with the horses, because what we're doing with horses is a creative process. So, so say more, you've, you've obviously done the body scanning before, and then you decided I need to go back and I need to work with them this way. and for everybody's learning, what did you learn as you went back to them and you did this? What did you experience? Well, I would say it started already in a paddock when I was inviting the horse to kind of come over. So it already had a like a, not a story going on, but the um, pathway, like energetic pathway. So, I waited till the horse decided to join up and we went together to the paddock and then I did the body scan around him or next to him and somehow I think I felt different because all the previous background work around this horse around this topic of how to be sensitive enough but still reassure not very sure, but the re, uh, still being able to set my boundaries and be very clear with my asking or invitation, then it 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 somehow like it developed a different state of mind in myself, and that felt different. Yeah. So what caught me, what caught my attention with what you just said is how to be sensitive enough. And we definitely want to do that, right? We want to be sensitive to our horses and sensitive to their needs and sensitive to how we're communicating with them. But yet, if we're not really deep inside of our bodies through using a tool like a body scan, the four steps to the present mind-body method, then how sensitive, how genuine or authentic or truly connecting is our sensitivity? Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I also like, like I, I wrote that I realized that so far I probably have more demanded the horse to come than to invite it. And that has made him a bit frustrated or, or not like so soft and so cooperative. Well, he comes, but the mood is different. Or I sense there is not this equal um being or equal um sharing so yeah. in that sense it was it felt so different yeah so if you know i always try to step into the horse's point of view so if if i'm a horse and my safety depends on the congruency of others and my trust in another is based in how authentic and congruent how deeply they are within their own body and their own body awareness, then I'm going to demonstrate 
different behaviors that are reflective of that. And simply because that's what I need as a horse. And if I'm a horse that's had any trauma or I'm a horse that demands a lot of that congruency from a human being, then I'm going to be slightly guarded. I'm going to be hesitant. I might even go into lockdown. Like I, I even have, I have a new puppy, just hear her squeaky toys. And, and then when I get into my rush, rush mode, when I'm rushing around the ranch, trying to get stuff done, she just won't follow along with me physically. She locks down, she locks her whole body down. And then it takes even more time. And it's because I'm ahead of myself energetically. I'm, mm -hmm. I've got more of a stress thing going on because, oh shit, I got to get this done. I got, oh, I got to get the horses in. I got to do this. I got to do that. And she's super sensitive to it. And horses are too, obviously, because they're more primal beings and they're, they're living so much more deeply in their body. And this is something that we want to offer our clients so that they can understand the power of working with horses because they do, they help us come home to our body and to live more deeply into that core of our being where society is inviting us to get up here and to do, you know, we're in our heads, we're future thinking, we got to get stuff done. We're on social media, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. 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 So tell me what you saw differently in the horse as you did this piece with him. I'm, I'm hearing that he was different, but can you give specifics? body language or mm -hmm. gestures or eye contact or softening or um it was it was listening i would say listening and being present what Not being, um, what did you see in him though so that others can learn what did you see that mm -hmm. told you he was listening he was really close by. Um, he was breathing together with me. Mm. And, um, or at least it felt so. And uh, the shared space was like bodily felt, I would say. At least from my side. Yeah. So it was the strong bubble. And uh, afterwards, it was I, I just played with him, like um, without any specific tasks. And I previously had also worked with him. And this time afterwards, it was like he was dancing along, not uh, fulfilling my demand. So it in in that sense, it was like cooperation like in a different previously it was also cooperation but I think this experience somehow gave me the understanding that I knew cognitively how sensitive they are but I truly underestimated that because now I felt it bodily yeah. because they are so much more sensitive than I expected <laughs> yeah. And in, particular, yeah, in that sense more. I think it's fine tuning yeah. And deepening is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. Deepening yeah. and deepening into this energetic relationship and understanding each other more from the energy in the heart and the body than from the mental place. And it was so easy not, uh, to, 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 to label him like as a stubborn horse. Not a stubborn, but extremely sensitive to my own uh, not so sensitive steps towards him. So yeah, I see him much better. <laughs> like there is more clarity. And I think, you know, when we started to work together, I'm not sure if you could have gotten to this place at that time, even being vulnerable to this degree. Um, no, no, definitely not. And in that sense, all sort of like the, the other classes, like the energy work and these kind of 
things, they all have deepened. So it should be included. <laughs> I would s- strongly recommend. <laughs> well, yeah. it, it is. It's just how far people take it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, because it's, it's the same work, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a work on me. Horse knows how to be a horse, but uh, all the work must be done on, on myself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think that we don't know how deep we can go until we start to go deep. And, (laughs) you know, it's like we can think we can think that we understand a horse or we can think that we understand what they're offering us and what they're teaching us. But our human propensity is to try to grab a hold of the idea, grab a hold of the message, and then kind of go along in our business and get the, go on to the next thing. What's the next great thing that we're going to experience? And I know that what I want for people to experience is not going on to the next thing. It's more dropping in deeply into this beautiful moment, into this beautiful experience of this energetic exchange and exploration held by the horse in their natural beingness and for some horses like the one that you're working with he he is requiring that that's one of his needs in relationship and so then if we as the person who's interacting with this lovely being is not going in deeper is not recognizing that other individuals need for presence for depth for living in our body for for being congruent if we can't recognize that or an individual doesn't recognize that then that's when the labeling does start you know you're being this he's being that she's being this because that behavior is not the behavior that we want it's not what's making our life easy or pleasurable (laughs) but that's not relationship right that's that's um, not relating to what's being shown to us. It's instead running an agenda, running our ego, running our needs. And I, I know this because I've done it. I mean, this is, this is why I work with horses and I work with animals and I work with mother nature because um, all of those beings help me to come into a greater level of presence into a greater level of who I who I am at my absolute source spiritual soulful beingness versus who I am at what the world is demanding of me right yeah and even these uh, regular words like uh, I, I also wrote down that like what you said in a previous call that I, I wasn't participating that uh, just be happy with the way you are at the mo- at that moment that got again so many deeper layers or levels and uh, and actually this is um, really helping me to grow to understand that I don't have to do anything and it's totally okay just to enjoy that uh, state of bliss without serving others because through that i'm serving others actually yes yeah so i i I said to all clients no this is my time (laughs) so yeah and i want so much more (laughs) yeah well i was really happy to read that in your form and to see that you made that decision that you know i think I think it's really important if we want to facilitate others in this in this way that we do balance it with our own time with our horses, our own process with the horses and being the student, truly being the student of horse, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it was doing nothing was much better than doing something. Yeah, I would say. And I'm really glad that you practice the piece of being at least okay, if not happy with whoever you are in the moment, right? If we can really come to that place of self-acceptance. And I think that the, the four steps is really at the higher level, the more evolved level of using that tool is designed for that to just be able to, and I say just, to to be able to at any given time come in and and do an understanding of ourselves on those multiple levels of our consciousness 
and not have to change it right away, not judge it, not try to be different, not shame ourselves, not beat ourselves up, but just say, okay, in this moment, this is what I'm running energetically. This is what's coursing through my body and my mind and my vibrational field and not have to change it, but just notice it and be with it and have curiosity around it. Wow, where did this come from? And hmm, okay, this is fascinating. And, and wow, I'm really noticing how this is really lodged in this one area of my body. What will happen if I simply notice the sensations there? And then the horse starts licking and chewing. And, and then all of a sudden that energy starts to soften and move energetically. And that's the gateway the gateway to the healing i think personally yeah and so i'm hearing yeah. that you're and actually to... yeah and actually since then i feel a little bit like high like i have i would have uh, used something <laughs> because it it uh, raises you and uh, it's like so easy to be happy is a small word but it's you know a different state of bliss or or, or sort of so one dose per each day, yeah, I could get used to that. Yeah, yeah, and then we have to also get used that to that we don't always get the happiness. True, true. <laughs> yeah, but still, the the door is so easily open, openable. So, so and and through animals, and I think the horse adds the horsepower to it. The, of course, the dogs, cats, uh, forest, all this is helping. But when you tune in together with a horse, the, the field gets so powerful. I think there is some something special. Yeah, they are yeah. vibrational beings and and the way I see them, like many of the the animals in the the wild kingdom, they are vibrational beings, and so are our cats and our dogs. I think our cats and our dogs were so conditioned on how to be with them and how they're supposed to be with us that they can open us up also in different ways and they everybody is our teacher are we going to allow them to be our teacher or are we going to dominate that's the that's the bigger question of our life path but yeah i'm with you the horses are just they're really special in this way and because they are animals that are preyed upon versus our cats and dogs are animals that prey on <laughs> they have a different perspective. They have a different way of being in the world and sensing the world and um, interpreting and being connected in a different way. Yeah, it's that spacious energy, don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah. And also demanding clarity, not just become spacious or drift away, but again, this... Um, there is a balance between um, asking and uh, allowing or this kind of thing. So it's a different space, space or the, yeah, the field with boundaries, but the boundary is uh, shifting uh, further when you go deeper. So, yeah. yeah, it's. Uh, and there's a difference a between um, there's a difference between kind of instructing and telling versus an invitation. And if we don't, mm -hmm. if we haven't started with the invitation, we haven't built that energetic connection and mutual kind of flow between the two of us, then trying to achieve anything with that horse is going to be more difficult. And I think that this horse is really showing you that and that you've experienced while this is what invitation feels like. It's what it looks like. The doorway opened, as you said, in your form, right? Mm -hmm. yeah and if i try to remember i think it all started uh, uh with the last uh, mind body course lesson yeah 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 because some sort of thing opened up and it it's like a process that is still ongoing which yeah. is so nice and great <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's wonderful and yeah you got to experience the power of that process and what happens mm -hmm. energetically in it. And it was, it's shifting you, it's shifting something within mm -hmm. you. And 
It's beautiful. Well, thank you, Hella. This is really an, a nice dialogue that we've had. And I, I want to say how much of a pleasure it's been to work with you. And you just go out there and you apply and you're earnest and you're self-reflective and you're sincere and you want to do the best for others. And it's just, you are blossoming into this beautiful facilitator and it's it's just really evident. So thank you. Yeah, thanks to you. So yeah, it's shared experience, I would say, totally. Good, yeah. good.